Good morning and welcome to Ox Hill Baptist Church. We are grateful that you are here with us today as we worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope that you enjoyed your time in Sunday school this morning. If you are not engaged in Sunday school, that might be something that you want to consider in the new year is to get connected to one of our Sunday school classes. We have several offered from children through adults. It's a good New Year's resolution for you to consider uh, being a part of Sunday school each and every Sunday morning and having that time of Bible study and fellowship with your fellow believers in Jesus Christ. So please look forward to joining us in Sunday school in the coming weeks. I want to call to your attention the fact that during this week, the church office is going to be closed for most of the week. Uh, there will be some people in and out uh, from time to time, but there is going to be no uh, set regular schedule in the church office this week. So if you are in need of reaching out to somebody, the, the best way to get us is either our, our cell phones or you can uh, uh, send us an email. We'll constantly check our email. That might be the best way. And so please uh, make note of that. Uh, also want to encourage you as we close out this church year, uh, we thank you and appreciate your generosity and your giving to the church. And we hope that you will consider maybe giving a one final gift to the church. Uh, this year has been a difficult year for many of us. And, uh, but some of us uh, may have a little extra that you can give and we'd like for you to consider giving to the church. Uh, as we close this year out, or maybe as we start the next year, as we have been behind in some of our giving this year, and we could really use a boost from you and your generosity. So if you would consider doing that and pray about that, we would give uh, thanks to the Lord for that uh, offering and that generosity. Uh, you can mail your check in to P.O. Box 220536, Chantilly, Virginia, 20153. There's online giving options as well that you can find on our website at oxhillbaptist.org. Uh, or if you would just like to drop it off at the church, uh, we would be more than happy to um, take it that way as well. Uh, but thank you for your generosity this year, for sustaining the work and the mission of this church. And we look forward to your continued support of the work of Ox Hill Baptist Church. Also want to thank you for your support and your giving to the December mission offering as we will be splitting this offering between uh, Serve Trust and Lena Lavanya and her work in India, the Lot Carey Mission School and Emil Sampil in Liberia, as well as the Lottie Moon Christmas offering for missionaries around the world. We thank you for your generosity so far in that. If you'd like to give to that, we ask that you do so. Uh, through this week and get that in before the end of the month of December. And we appreciate your support in that endeavor as well. Lastly, we encourage you to check out your connects for any and all information about what the church is doing. Uh, the coming week and a half, uh, we are not going to have a regular connect, but you can look at this past week as uh, for information. And then into the new year, the connects will be available to you again. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, let us prepare our hearts and minds as we worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On this Sunday after Christmas, we hear the echo of the angel's words, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. This is indeed good news. And like the shepherds, we are invited to go to the stable to worship the Christ child. So join me now as we gather around the manger to worship our Savior as we sing together, What Child Is This? <laughs>
Good morning, church family. Will you join me as we pray today, together today? Father, our hearts are full today. We're full, our hearts are full because you have provided so much for us during such a difficult time. We thank you for the many families that you have provided for us. Father, I thank you for seeing me through all these years by providing your family when my family could not be there. Over 45 years ago, as a young woman, far away from home, from friends as well as family, a woman befriended me. It was my my next door neighbor, my landlord. She became a mother to me during that time. And as I said farewell to her, I said, Mrs. Ballesteri, how can I ever thank you? And her words were, just pass it on. And over the years, you continue to provide your family for me. Just last year and faced with a, a, a surgery recovery time you provided an international family who brought me food and cleaned my kitchen and then thanksgiving during a pandemic when families could not meet again lord you provided family they came and met on our porch and spent some precious time with us helping us to connect and be family and father just in the time that i say this prayer today many of our citizens will die and many of their families cannot be there but again lord you have provided family you've provided nurses doctors all medical assistants holding phones or tablets so families can say their last words on this earth. You've provided family. And when our citizens have died, they have died with dignity and they have died with someone holding their hand. For this, I thank you. I thank you for the family of scientists who've worked so diligently to see that we have a vaccine, some way to get out of this pandemic. I also thank you the family of truck drivers, of airplane pilots, all making the distribution of the vaccine to us as quickly as possible. I thank you for all those workers who've put their lives at risk to see that we have what we need Father God, thank you for this family. Thank you for our church family who's helped us through the Advent season to find ways to celebrate the many things that you have done for us. Thank you for giving us this quiet time to reflect on your love for us. And as we put our Christmas boxes away and as we clean out our houses, and get ready for a new year. Lord, may we clean out our hearts. May we see one another not as different, but as the same. And may your Holy Spirit live in our hearts and in our lives, helping us to see our brothers and sisters all around us and helping us make together the darkness light. May your will be done in our lives this year, oh God, I pray. Amen. Hi, friends. Um, does anyone know what this is? Maybe I can get Mr. Jesse to zoom in on it. On the back. This is my library card. Um, how many of you have a library card? Yeah, 
I grew up going to the library. There was one right down from my house. We would walk there and spend hours at a time. Cool thing about this library card is I can check out books and I can look up newspapers and magazines. I can get on the computer. I have an access to all this information and fun things. Our library has special programs. This library card makes me an official member of the library. And through that, I get all these benefits. And guess how much this library card card cost me nothing it was free completely free to sign up for a library card so first of all I must say that if you don't have a library card go find one even during a pandemic they will let you schedule times and check out books and there's lots of things online you can get so this library card is pretty special our whole family enjoys the library and it got me thinking about being a member of the library. And this card makes me a member and gets me all the benefits of being a child of the library. Well, knowing Jesus and accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior allows us to be children of God. And as children of God, we get access to all of God's promises in God's word. And we get the gift of a family of God that supports us and encourages us and holds us accountable. And to be a child of God, guess how much it costs you? Nothing. Just a decision to believe in Jesus and accept him as your Lord and Savior. And then you get to be a child of God with all the perks of being an heir, a child of the almighty God. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? So I want to affirm in you that you are a child of God. If you believe in Jesus, you are a child of God, a loved child of God. It takes no money. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what you look like. You, through Jesus, get full access to the goodness of God because you are a child of God. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus. And Lord, we thank you that because of Jesus, we can be called children of God. And your word says, and that is what we are. Lord, help us to fully embrace being your child. Lord, help us see your promises and your goodness all around us. And Lord, help us to share that goodness with others. And remind others that through Jesus, they can also be children of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I got a lot of other memberships on this Aldi, by the way. Quarter holders, amazing. If you've never had one, find one. Also, Giant, I am a member of Giant, and Harris Teeter, where we do a lot of shopping. And I still have my old Piggly Wiggly, which most of you won't know what that is, because that is a North Carolina store. Good morning. Today's scripture comes from Galatians 4, verses 4 through 7. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of the son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When the angel's song is silent and the
the star is not so bright. When the stable door stands open in the cold mid-morning light. When the angel's song is silent and the shepherds have gone home. Then the promise of Christmas begins. When the angel's song is silent and the prophecies were filled. When the swaddling clothes are folded and the baby's cry is stilled. When the angel's song is silent and the trauma is all done, then the promise of Christmas begins. For the promise is more than a child in the hay, more than shepherds and kings and a glad Christmas day. Yes, the Can you imagine being a famous, rich, successful individual's child? I mean, having Bill Gates as your daddy, or Michael Jordan, LeBron James, uh, maybe a Kardashian or a Hilton, uh, maybe Oprah Winfrey as y your mother. Uh, what about being called a child of Warren Buffett or Jeff Bezos or one of the Walmart heirs being your parents? I know what some of you are thinking right now. Man, I'd have a lot of money. A, a, a big house, a, a yacht, luxury car. Oh, wait, I don't need luxury cars. I have a personal driver, a, a, a personal chef. The list goes on and on. Well, if they can't be your mom or dad, maybe you should just be adopted by them, right? Kind of a rags to riches story that we would be living into. And, you know, not even of the John D. Rockefeller type, a version where Rockefeller was a bookkeeper's assistant and made into the richest man in the world. Uh, maybe a little bit more like, but not really like, a Kurt Warner story who went from a grocery store clerk to a bad European football league to uh, making it into the NFL, becoming a Super Bowl champion, and a Hall of Famer. But that's not really the story either, is it? We like these stories, though. We like the stories like Michael Jordan gets cut from his high school basketball team only to become, well, you know, Michael Jordan. Or, or Oprah gets fired from her first uh, television gig only to become, well, Oprah. Uh, you, you know, you get a TV, you get a TV, you get a, you know, she's Oprah. These stories of perseverance and becoming successful are inspiring and, and they give us hope. However, maybe just maybe we're approaching this whole thing wrong. Maybe we are measuring success the wrong way with the wrong tools 
fame, and fortune. Okay, then you say, maybe it's more like kids that are adopted by wealthy individuals. Well, isn't that great? You know, like Madonna adopting several children or Brangelina, that's Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie adopting several children as well. These are cool stories of adopting kids into riches and wealth. Well, adoption is important because we need it. There are over 1,400 children in the state of Virginia right now waiting to be adopted. And over 100,000 children in the United States waiting to be adopted. And another 15.1 million orphans have lost both their parents in this world who are waiting to be adopted. And that's just what we know of. The statistics go on and on. We need more people to step up uh, to the plate and adopt children. Uh, there's over 100,000 churches in the state of Virginia alone. Just think about it. If each church stepped up to sponsor a family to adopt one child, the state of Virginia could adopt every child available in the United States for adoption. Uh, think about we could put a dent into the world orphan numbers. We need more people. We need more churches stepping up to the plate to adopt. Adoption is important, but that's not really what the scripture in Galatians 4 talks about. That's not really success either. What is it that Galatians 4 talks about when it talks about adoption? Now, my family knows a little bit something about orphans and adoption as well. Two stories that you may not know about me and my family. What some of you do not know is that my mother was previously married before my father. She had my oldest two siblings, Michael and Angel, with another man. It was a difficult and rocky marriage that ended in divorce. And through a series of unfortunate events that I'm not going to get into today, my mother ends up moving back in with her parents next door to where my father lived. They began to date. My dad becomes a Christian. They get married. And my dad willingly and excitedly ends up adopting my brother and sister, Michael and Angel, as his own. And I can honestly say that if I didn't know this story, I would have never have known that they were adopted. For my dad is their dad. He has always loved and cared for my eldest siblings, not as if they were his, because in his world, they are his. And where does this love come from that my father has embodied in adopting my oldest brother and sister? I really think it comes from the story of his father, my grandfather. See, in 1910, in November of 1910, my grandfather, Harry Boberg, was born into a modest milkman's family and his wife, John Boberg and Clara Donemeyer. By 1911... His father, my great-grandfather, died, and his mother had to place him and his siblings into an orphanage. There they were cared for. I don't know if it was really well, though. My grandfather grew up in the St. Aloysius Orphanage in Cincinnati, Ohio. His mother, Clara, tried to scrape together what she could to get her life together in order to be able to pull her children back out of the orphanage she ends up remarrying a man and getting pregnant. And the plans were after she gave birth to this child that she would pull all her children back into her home together. Unfortunately, my great-grandmother died in childbirth. By the age of six, my grandfather had lost both his mother and his father. I wish I could tell you some type of feel-good story that some family member or some other wonderful family came in, scooped up, and adopted him and his siblings, and life was great, but no. 
He grew up in the difficult and humbling orphanage. As he and other members of my dad's family tell the story, he occasionally was beaten by the nuns for poor behavior. He was declared uneducatable, it says, at the age of eight in the third grade, which was code for they needed someone to work the fields and the land and milk the cows. After the almost slave-like labor went on for another eight years in my grandfather's life, somewhere around 16, he decided he had had enough and he ran away to live on the streets. He did get a job and slowly began improving his life. He eventually got married and had six children, but it wasn't easy. The pain and the scars of his past were always a part of his life. But my grandfather persevered. He overcame his past. He loved his life and his family. And I don't know of anyone that I have ever heard laugh so much as my grandfather laughed. He didn't always know how to say it or even show it, but you knew how much he cared for you and how much he loved you. As life continued to deal him blows, he became more committed to God, and through a quiet, subtle, committed faith, he truly embodied the nature of Christ. And I believe it is the example of my grandfather who led my father to so willingly step in and parent my siblings. As powerful and encouraging as this is, God tells us of a greater story of adoption. One greater than the rags to riches stories of people being adopted by wealthy parents or even the greatness of being adopted by what you and I would call ordinary people, which truth be told, they're far from ordinary. It is a story of you and I being adopted into the family of God. See, in Galatians 4, we find a spiritual rag to riches story. See, hear the words that we might receive adoption as children of God, that we are no longer a slave, but a child of God. See, this is the greatest news and the greatest adoption any of us ever could receive. See, as Jesus is born and celebrated at Christmas, we begin to realize the birth of Jesus leads us to new possibility. It leads us to the possibility of being children of God, too. The story of Jesus' birth, life, death, and resurrection is a narrative of adoption. Adoption for you and I to join the family of God. In the same way, Joseph steps in and adopts Jesus lovingly and caringly to be and provide a a dad for Jesus. We have a spiritually, a spiritual father in God that embraces us as part of the family as well. Oh, what encouraging news. No matter where we are in life, no matter what the circumstances of our life have brought us, we have a dad who loves us and cares for us in God. But what does that mean for us? And how are we supposed to live? How are we supposed to live as adopted brothers and sisters of Jesus? How are we supposed to live as adopted children of God? See, the words of Galatians 4 are spiritually and theologically rich. And in exploring these truths, we find out the depths of God's love and work in our lives. We learn what being adopted does for us and means for us. See, when we are adopted by God, we experience the difference in our work and God's work. See, no matter how hard you or I try, how much work we do, how good and efficient our work is, 
We know our efforts to live good lives could never meet the standard that it needs to meet. People cannot self-justify because without faith, it is impossible. Uh, Rather, it is the work of God. God's work of love in the world and in our life that changes things and leads us to faith and life everlasting. Sin, when we are adopted, we realize that it is not a matter of our work, but it is God's work that provides the grace and the love and the faith. See, when we are adopted, we experience the difference as well between being a servant and being a child. A a servant must do what he is told and only what he or she is told. Servants are certain they serve. But children, let's, let's say adult children, will ideally live into the best interest of their family. They will behave and act appropriately. They will see themselves as participants in a larger relational system than themselves. They will learn to give and to receive and to promote and provide for the family. It's not self-seeking, but rather a part of a larger picture. See, when we are servants, we are doing what somebody told us to. But when we are children, we are doing what we long to do because we are part of a family. See, when we are adopted as well, we experience the difference in rules and relationship. There's a massive shift in the sense of obligation that we have in this passage. Rules have much to say about our actions, but rarely do they shape our attitudes, thoughts, and emotions. Rules tell us what is, what is good and what is bad. A relationship is a far more influential force on the whole of how we live. And then when we are adopted, we also experience the difference between the external and internal. And this is the truth and, and the place where it all comes together. When Christ's work replaces our work. When slaves and servants become children and when relationship guides us instead of rules, something clear happens. We internalize the heart of God into our own. Instead of an external code of behavior, our moral compass is internalized. Verse 6 says, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. God says, I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people in Jeremiah 31, 33. One Christian therapist puts it this way. God gives us a sanctified gut. We feel led from within By the corrective voice of God, we come to know when our motivations are unholy and self-seeking. We experience conviction like a gnawing ache that urges us to realign ourselves with who God designed us to be. We learn to trust our wisdom as spirit-led discernment and not just spiritualized personal opinion. See, we have a choice as adopted heirs, children of God. We live according to a new standing or we do not. See, we must not live out of the narrative that Paul warned the people of Galatia of. Slaves set free as adopted children, but refusing to live according to their new standing. And see, we see that sad trend in our churches and with many of our brothers and sisters today. As adopted children, we do not have to live into legalistic obedience to rights and wrongs. We don't have to live into uh, unchanged lives as if salvation was some type of eternal insurance. 
Uh, we see people today hypocritically claiming one thing but living out something different in their lives. We see that uh, people having difficulty feeling loved by God because of past mistakes. See, that's not how the work of God is. That is not how the love of God is. That is not what it means to be an adopted child of God. It is about feeling something deep within you and living from that place. See, all of these things are variations of nine to five employees or servants. Uh, we, we do this because of some type of obligation. But we need to heed the call of a, a new emancipation proclamation of Paul. We can lay these patterns down in full confidence of being radically accepted and beloved by God as God's children. See, putting on heirs, we can put off our employee status and put on our, our heir status set for life. See, it is like my sister and my brother, once adopted by my father, that is how they lived. They were Tom Boberg's children, and no one ever knew anything different. They began to embody his character and his demeanor. They looked up to him and sought his advice and care. People even would comment, oh, you look just like your dad. Once adopted, they were different and lived differently. He was their daddy. I wish every difficult story had such a storybook ending, but they don't. However, one story does have a great ending, or shall we call it a beginning? And that is the story of you and I being adopted by God. And our becoming a child of God, may we always live like God's, our daddy. Amen and amen. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Jesus' birth is a time for celebration, but it's also a time for proclamation. As children of God and followers of Christ, we are called to proclaim the good news of his birth to our world. Sing with me now this great spiritual that reminds us we need to go and tell it everywhere that God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn.
As we close our time together today, I offer you these words of invitation. Maybe you have never felt or known what it means to be adopted by God. God is offering you that invitation of love and grace today. God is holding out arms of care, waiting to embrace you. All you have to do is say yes. And in saying yes, the prayer is for transformation to come in the days ahead so you will never know anything different than who God is for you and that you are a child of God. If you'd like to commit yourself to this family or become a part of this family of God, I encourage you to reach out to me and we will talk about it and we will celebrate it and we will be a time of encouragement together. Maybe you feel like you are a part of this family, but you are having a tough time navigating it. It's troubles and trials and tribulations and maybe you have a lot of questions or concerns or, or maybe you just haven't been living up to your part of being a part of this family. We'd love to talk with you. We'd love to have time of prayer with you, encourage you as well. And maybe for some of you, you being a part of the larger family of God has led you to understand that you need to be a part of this little family of God we call here at Ox Hill Baptist Church. We'd invite you to officially become a member of this family. If you'd like to do that, call us, reach out to us. We'd love to make that happen. Whatever it is, whatever is gnawing on your heart and in your life, know that I am here for you. But more importantly, most importantly, God is here waiting on you to respond to the call that God has placed on your life. And now as you go, may you know that you are an adopted child of God, beloved and cared for. And as you try to live as such, may Christ go before you, come behind you, and reside within you from now till forevermore. And now let us pray the prayer that our Savior, our brother, Jesus Christ, taught us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.